much of this as we can in this video and then see what we can get covered in the other you'll get both of them this assignment will probably be due on thursday uh, along with your review is unless something changes you guys have had time to work on your reviews so really i mean i would just go ahead and finish it up and that way i just have it for whenever because some of this schedule stuff we get towards the end of the year if something changes and you're in my class well i'm just going to go ahead and ask for the review if that makes any sense It'd be funny if they came in and just like started having a report to different areas instead, but like in different areas of the school. So she's just in the halls basically the rest of the day trying to get to these different locations. Okay. Uh, do moves theorem uh, to find uh, two plus radical three i to the fourth, right? The answer in rectangular coordinates given exact answer. So we're going to start off with this guy uh, by actually. Uh, breaking it down into a couple different things. So it says 2 plus radical 3, and I believe the i is on the outside to the 4th. The easiest thing to do with this is to take 2 plus radical 3i and think of it as squared squared. All right, so if we have something like this and we're squaring it, what we're going to actually do with it first is foil it. Okay, so we're going to take 2 plus radical 3i times 2 plus radical 3i. Okay, pulling it's pretty easy, first outer inner last. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, 2 times radical 3i is positive 2. Radical 3i. Radical 3i times 2 is positive 2. Radical 3i. Uh, the Probably the more complex, and of course you guys are used to this by now, is radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. Uh, I times I is I squared. I squared is equivalent to negative 1, so I'm getting 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. All right, so what we can do is we can simplify this, so we can write this off as 1, right, because we've got 4 minus 3, uh, plus 4 radical 3i. Okay, now we would get that same thing a second time, correct? Right, because I would end up having to do that twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to foil that solution because that answer is one plus four radical three i squared. So we're going to foil that. Okay, one times one is one. Uh, let's see, we're going to get. Essentially, I think I could probably skip through a, a touch of this and go ahead and write up eight, uh, plus eight radical 3i, right? Can we agree with that? Because we're going to get, you know, 1 times 4 and 4 times 1. Uh, in the last part here, though, we're going to get 16 times 3i squared, all right? So we need 16 times 3, which is... Wait, 16 times 3i squared, would it be negative 3 because it's squared or not? It's going to be 4 times 4, which is 16, right? Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. And then I'm going to get i times i, which is negative, or sorry, which is i squared, which is negative 1. So it's really 4, or sorry, 16 times 3 times negative 1. So I know I'm going to end up with a negative answer. What's it come out to? Negative 48. Okay, negative 48. All right, now we've got 1 plus, so we're going to end up with an answer, which is negative 47 plus a radical 3i. And because it wanted it in rectangular coordinates, is this rectangular coordinates? Yeah. Okay, so this is my answer. Uh, let's actually, hold on a second. Yeah, either way. Yeah. And that i on the end isn't coming from the i's because we've already we've eliminated that but it's i because of its rectangular coordinates. Okay? All right. So hopefully we understand that. Um, number two, the same thing, except that in our first one, it gave it to us already in rectangular coordinates and asked for rectangular coordinates. In number two, it gives it to us in polar coordinates and asked for rectangular coordinates. So we have one-third is representing my hypotenuse, 
Uh, sis, my angle is 135 degrees to the fifth. Okay. All right, so hopefully I can do a good job with this. One third, sis, 135 to the fifth. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one third to the fifth. Okay. One third to the fifth. That would also, let's see, I'm trying to think. That would be the same as 3 to the negative fifth. So what you should get, is anybody actually working this out? All right. I'm, I'm trying to give you the instructions, not just so that you hear them, but so that you actually work it out. All right. You should get a fraction there with 1 third to the fifth. 1 over 243 is correct. Okay. Now, we're not going to take 135 to the fifth. What we're actually going to do is we're going to take 135 times 5. Okay. Okay, so we get 1 over 243, sis, 675 degrees. Okay, now our issue with this is that we want our answer in rectangular coordinates. So what we're needing to find out is we're needing to find the x and y coordinate of this location. Okay? So ultimately we're looking at this over here. Now at 675 degrees, we need to find out where that actually winds up. So what do I want to do with 675? Minus 360. So 675 minus 360, what's that going to come out to? What's that? 315? So that means that I should come out here with 45 degrees left over, okay? And my hypotenuse is 1 over 243. Does that make sense? Okay, but I still need the x and the y coordinate. I know that the y coordinate is going to be negative because of where it's located. And because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, I know that my ratios are 1 to 1 to radical 2. So if I have the hypotenuse, what do I have to do to find one of the other sides? Divide by radical 2. Very good. So if I've got 1 over 243, and I want to divide by radical 2, I'm essentially dividing by radical 2 over 1, I'm going to end up multiplying by the reciprocal, correct? Okay. So you could look at that as, if it helps, multiplying by 1 over radical 2. Okay. Which is 1 over 243 radical 2, which means we're going to have to multiply by radical 2 over radical 2. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to end up taking, I'm going to get radical 2 over, and I need 243 times 2. 486. Radical 2 over 486. All right, so I've got radical 2 over 486 here, and I've got negative radical 2 over 486 there. Okay. So my answer should be radical 2 over 486 minus radical 2 over 486i. Okay. That's the rectangular coordinates. Okay. X and then Y. Okay. So the thing that you want to remember whenever you're converting polar coordinates, uh, when you have to use the move theorem, that you're taking the hypotenuse to the fifth, but you're multiplying your degree. Oh, so the rectangular coordinates is your answer. You don't got to like boil all that. No. No, that's only whenever you have rectangular coordinates and you're taking it to a power. Okay? When you have polar coordinates and you're taking it to a power. Now, granted, we're eventually getting to some more complex situations where um, actually it comes out almost less complex. They're, they're different scenarios. Like, for instance, if they gave us rectangular coordinates and they took it to a power and they wanted their answer in polar coordinates, right? That would change a couple of things. Okay?
But so far, we're just dealing with moving things into rectangular coordinates. All right, even on like number three, okay, uh, you'll notice that it matches up fairly well with number one. It's rectangular coordinates. It's asking for rectangular coordinates, but notice that it's three minus radical three i cubed. All right, so we want to foil, and then we want to multiply it by the original, okay? Because essentially what we want is three minus radical three i times three minus radical three i times three minus radical three i. So there's a foil in there, and then there's a separate where I'm not multiplying by the solution. You, you get what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So essentially what that boils down to is 3 minus radical 3i squared to the first. Is that all? All right. So 3 minus radical 3i times 3 minus radical 3i. Okay. Help me out here. What do we do? I know what to do, but I want to know that you guys know what you're doing. Okay. So give me my first number. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 radical 3i, minus 3 radical 3i. Um, no, because remember, they're both negative, so negative radical 3 times negative radical 3 is 3, but the i squared is going to put it back as a negative 3, right? All right, so go ahead and simplify. Okay, so that's our solution there. Now what do I need to multiply this by? By the original 3 minus radical 3i. Okay, instead of on the other one where we would have multiplied it again by 6 minus 6 radical 3i. So 6 times 3, we're going to get 18. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. So this is going to be positive 6 times 3i squared. So actually, wouldn't it be negative 18? Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. All right, 6 times 3 is 18 times negative 1. So I should get negative 18, I believe. All right, so what happens with my 18s? They're going to end up canceling out. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So my 18s cancel out. And so let's simplify from here. Negative 24 radical 3i. Okay, that's the answer. Basically what this means is that there, that the x-coordinate on my rectangular coordinates is zero. Okay, so it's on, uh, we would say that this is on the y-axis. Okay, so this is my answer right here. Okay, any questions about that? So you can get zero for an x and you can get zero for a y. Okay. There's, there might be some times where there's only part of an answer, or it's the whole answer, but you won't see the other. All right. All right, let's look at number four. Uh, find the three cube roots of 216 cis 60. This is going the other way. So instead of taking something to a power, we are rooting it. Okay? So 216 cis 60. Okay, and effectively what we're wanting to do on this is we want the three cube roots. Okay, so, you know, imagine it's more like this. Well, whenever we took it to a power, we took the, the hypotenuse and we actually took it to that power, right? Okay, so the cube root of 216 is 6. That's absolutely right. Now, whenever we did the degrees... We multiplied, right? We multiplied by the exponent. Here we're going to divide by the exponent. So we should get 6 cis what? 20 degrees. Okay? 
Now, the thing with this is that we can hit this location multiple times, whereas we couldn't with the exponent. Okay? So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take 360 and we're going to divide it by this 3. Okay? To find out how many different places we can get to. Or how many different degrees. 120 degrees. Which means, because we should have, it says find the 3 cube root, so we should have 3 values. Now, the hypotenuse is not going to change, okay? So what I'm going to do from the 20 is I'm going to add 120, okay? So the next location is 120 degrees from the first one. So I should be at 140 degrees. Keep my hypotenuse, add another 120 to that. should be 260, okay? And those are my answers. I feel like that's fairly easy. Okay, good. All right. Uh, rather than going all the way back to that page that you guys are already looking at anyway, uh, let's look at number five. Now, the issue with number five and how it's different than number four is number five gives you an answer in rectangular coordinates. Okay. Uh, find the fourth. I find the four fourth roots of negative 16 and express them in rectangular coordinates to give the exact answer. All right, so all they give me is negative 16, which means that it's at zero I. Okay? So just, you know, that to me helps to kind of understand that. Okay? So as we would look at this, we would see this location show up right there, okay, at negative 16 plus 0i. So um, we know the hypotenuse is negative 16. What is the degree of that location? 180 degrees, right? Okay, so now that I have that, now I've been able to put this into polar coordinates, right? Now, it says find the, four, uh, find the four fourth roots of this, and it's going to want them in rectangular coordinates, but let's at least go ahead and get our locations um, otherwise. So what are we going to do with the negative 16? Fourth root it, okay? So what's the fourth root of 16? 2. Okay. So we're going to get 2. And what are we going to do with the 180? Divide by 4. What's 180 divided by 4? 45. Okay. And the other thing that we can do is we can take 360 and divide it by 4 to find out how many degrees we're going to end up hitting away from this. 90 degrees. All right. So we'd get 2 cis 135. 2 cis, what, 225? Am I wrong on that? Somebody check my work there. 225 and 2 cis, uh, what, 315? 315. So those are the polar coordinates of those locations. What we still have to do, though, is find the rectangular coordinates of those locations, which if you'll notice um, that if we look at these, okay, what we end up with is 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, where my hypotenuse is 2, 2, 2, and 2, right? So all I really need to do, if these are 45s and it's 1, 1, radical 2, what do I need to do with the 2? Divide by radical 2. 2 divided by radical 2 means we're going to multiply. We're going to get 2 radical 2 over 2, or what? radical 2. Okay? So, let's clean this up here a little bit. Alright, uh, this would be uh, radical 2, radical 2. So, this is going to be radical 2 plus radical 2i. Right? This is going to be negative radical 2, radical 2. So, our answer there is negative radical 2 plus radical 2i. Make sense? That's going to be negative radical 2. So this is going to be negative radical 2 minus radical 2i. Okay? 
that's going to be negative radical 2. So I'm going to get radical 2 minus radical 2 i. Those are going to be those four coordinate or four rectangular coordinate locations. Do we understand that? Okay. I think it's easier to go ahead and get the polar and then find the rectangular from there. Okay. All right. That was what? Number five. Go ahead. Are there questions like these on the test? Like on any on your next test? Not on your next test. Um, I don't know about if we get to test 20, I don't. I could check and see if there's going to be anything like this on there. Even if there is, what you have to remember is that there's going to be enough other questions that you shouldn't ever be required. Like even by test 20, you shouldn't have to do one of these in order to fill out your 15 questions or 14 questions or however many you decide to do. Does that make sense? So don't get so overwhelmed with it that like, oh my goodness, I'm going to be tested over this. And I'm going to have to answer this question in order to pass or do anything. Okay? All right. I mean, I guess I'm going to keep moving on though. Okay? All right. Number six. Uh, write the three cube roots of one cis zero. All right, so at this point, uh, hopefully we know what we're doing. If we're finding the cube roots, what are we going to do with one? The cube root. We're going to do the cube root of one. What's the cube root of one? One. Okay. What are we going to do with zero? Divided by three. What's zero divided by three? Zero. Okay. Uh, what are we going to do with 360? Divided by 3 and get 120. Okay, so we have 1 cis 0, but we're also going to get 1 cis 120, right? Okay, and we're also going to get 1 cis uh, 240, right? And that's where we would stop. And all of these should be between 0 and 360, okay? All right, so now we come over. We're going to try and find our coordinate. Um, at zero degrees, we are right there, right? Okay, so what are the rectangular coordinates of that location? Keeping in mind our hypotenuse is one. What's your x coordinate of that location? Your x coordinate? One. Okay. What's the y? Zero. So you could write this as just one, or you could write it if it helps you to think about it as one plus zero i. Okay. Now for one cis 120, all right? 120 degrees uh, is going to be 60 degrees here, 30 here hypotenuse of 1. So that would mean that the side opposite of 30 is going to be half that, correct? Right? And the side opposite of 60, so we can see the difference, is going to be radical 3 over 2. Correct? Okay. Uh, let's see. The only other thing is keep in mind that's negative. So what are my rectangular coordinates? For one cis one twenty. Okay, and that looks good. All right, now we want the two forty. Okay, which is still the same sixty thirty. That's one. My x coordinate doesn't change. Okay, and the only thing that should change about my y coordinate is is the sign. Okay, so that should be pretty easy to figure out that we'd get negative one half minus radical three over two i. Okay. All right. Number seven. Number seven. Find the three cube roots of 512 cis 30 degrees. Okay, 512 cis 30 degrees. 
and it wants these in polar coordinates, which is nice for us because it's in polar coordinates. We don't have to change the form. Uh, if we went to three cube roots, what am I doing first with 512? Cube rooting it. What's the cube root of 512? Eight. Okay. Uh, what are we going to do with 30? And get 10. What do I want to do with 360? And get 120. All right, so we should get 8 cis what then for the next one? 130. Okay, and then 8 cis 250. And I'm done, right? Because we only want three cube roots. Anything over that's going to be over 360. Okay, and if I'm correct, those are our answers because that's all it wanted was polar coordinates. All right, so we're done there. Those ones are easy. These ones are. Yeah, if I had to convert these to rectangular coordinates. You're talking about uh, you're talking about where it gives it to us in rectangular coordinates and takes it to a power. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, those are tougher. So, all right. I think we're finally. Oh, we'll at least get through number eight. Number eight. You have to go back to that identity trig sheet, that trig identity sheet, which you're not going to want to do. Okay, uh, I get that. Um, so let me at least write down the question again. Uh, it says secant squared x over secant squared x minus 1 minus 1 equals cotangent squared x. So what you have to keep in mind on this as you're looking in that trig trigonomic identity sheet to see what also equals cotangent squared. All right. Uh, what I ended up doing with this, I'm just going to take you through my steps, um, hopefully methodically enough that you kind of understand what's going on. Uh, the first thing that I ended up doing was uh, changing the form of uh, secant squared x. Uh, secant squared x is equivalent to tangent squared x plus 1. Okay, so if you look through your trigonomic identity sheet, you should see some places where you see secant squared x and what it's equal to. Okay. And with that, uh, secant squared x minus 1 is equal to tangent squared x. Okay, because we're trying to get things in terms of cotangent. And the easiest way to do that is to get things over into terms of tangent. Uh, for instance, even this negative 1, uh, we can change that over to tangent squared x over tangent squared x because it's an identity that equals 1. Okay? Now, what's nice about doing it this way is that you'll notice that I have... Um, a fraction with a common denominator. So I can take tangent squared x plus 1 minus tangent squared x. Right? So what's going to end up hatch happening with the numerator? Factor, or, you know, we'd end up um, canceling out a tangent squared x. Is that correct? Right? Um, so I'm going to end up with 1 over tangent squared x. Okay, and that equals cotangent squared x. So that's the answer. Did, is that as hard as what it seemed like it was going to be? Because cotangent squared x is obviously the reciprocal of tangent squared x. Okay, so I just needed to get everything into terms of tangent squared x and then be able to get a reciprocal for it. Okay, I know that these, these again, these are questions that I... If they showed up on a test, you're not going to do them. Okay, so I'm not spending a huge amount of time on this. Uh, let's see, I think the last one, what is number nine? And I probably have just enough time to do it. Uh, your assignment, I think it's already in there, but it's going to be less than 82 through 30 even. Um, if you have concerns about questions that are in there, uh, less than 82 through 30 even. So I think there's about 15 questions. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything that's really super concerning. I'm 
not. Uh, like number 12, number 12 will be from stuff that we've covered today. Uh, number 10 will be from stuff we've covered today. Um, the only identity question that you're going to have to work out is going to be number 8. All the rest of them. So there's, there's only really one pretty difficult one. And so I would say just come to me at some point if you've got questions about it. Number 9. Hopefully I can get this done in the next five minutes. If I don't, don't sweat it. 6 sine theta over 1 minus cosine theta. Forms an identity with which of the following? Okay, so on this, uh, because it's two fractions you're trying to add together, uh, what you want to do is you want to get a common denominator out of this. So uh, multiply this side by sine theta over sine theta. Actually, what they end up doing, we multiply by sine theta over sine theta. What do they do over here? And they multiply this side by the conjugate. So they do 1 plus cosine theta, top and bottom. Okay, what that ends up boiling down to just in the short term, so you can see this is uh, 6 sine theta plus uh, 6 cosine theta sine theta all over because this is going to be a sum difference uh, 1 minus cosine squared theta because you're going to have to distribute the 6 to the 1 plus cosine theta, and so that's why we get this across the top. All right. I understand that they upset you. There's no reason to get violent. Okay. Over here, you're distributing the 6 uh, out to all this. You get 6 sine theta minus 6 cosine theta sine theta all over sine squared theta. You uh, should recognize this along with that Pythagorean identity. And forget it. We're going to quit right there. I'm not going to come back and probably finish this unless I finish it with the other group, but I'm probably not going to do a video for it. So you, I think you guys will know what your assignment is, okay? So next time we're in class, that will be due.